Let's turn to a Trinitarian response to biblical Unitarianism. My name is Aryaban Lyman Hanavi. Let's take the next 30 minutes and continue looking at the topic that we are um, investigating. We are uh, dealing with biblicalunitarian.com's article on Psalm 110, verse 1. And last week I read this 12 part summary of their position. You can see it on my screen right now. We're dealing with Psalm 110.1. I'm just going to kind of slowly scroll through uh, some of what I presented. I'm not going to read it all verbatim, but the, the gist is that they believe, Biblical Unitarian believes, that Psalm 110 is presenting a human Messiah who has is, is been exalted by God and sits at the right hand of God, but according to not only the Masoretic tradition of transmitting the original Hebrew and then the Greek, but also in preserving the oral um, pronunciations of the Hebrew terminology, biblical Unitarianism firmly believes. Biblical Unitarian firmly believes that these uh, uh, descriptions of uh, the Bible text uh, firmly confirm their own suspicion that that we're dealing with a human, and particularly they're going to deal with these Hebrew terms Adoni and Adonai, and the Greek terms. Uh, kurios and uh, tokuriomu and things like that. We'll get into all those technical into all those technicalities in time. But first, what I want to do is just look at the passage in English, and then tonight I think I will read the Hebrew, and then maybe I'll read the uh, the Greek as well. On your screen right now, we have NASB version of Psalm one ten one, a Psalm of David. The Lord says to my Lord, "Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet." It's not even really the whole verse that's in question. It's the, only the first clause, the Lord, or the, the clause that comes out of the introduction. The Lord says to my Lord, that phrase itself, where we have two Lords. We have L O R D, I can see on your screen, and I'll cap in all caps. Then we have capital L and then smaller case O R D. And those are the English representations of certain Hebrew words. So according to Biblical Unitarian, the first all caps L-O-R-D is Yahweh, which we'll see here in a moment in the Hebrew. And the second L-O-R-D is the human Messiah, Jesus. And he's been told to sit at the right hand of God until God makes uh, enemies of the Messiah, uh, makes a footstool under the feet of, of uh, Messiah himself, you know, turns his enemies into a footstool. So when we look at the uh, the Hebrew here that I've got pulled up on the right side that I just scrolled over to the right side of the screen, we have Le David Mizmor, the first two words in Hebrew reading from right to left. That's the Psalm of David. And then we have Neum Yahweh, Neum Yahweh, right here. Neum Yahweh, the word of the Lord or the oracle of the Lord, Yahweh, where ordinarily we had capital L-O-R-D, now we suddenly have the tetragrammaton name of God right there. So, Neum Yahweh, and then it continues, La Adoni, or Ladoni, if you want to make the liaison sound a little more accurate. So, Neum Yahweh Ladoni, the Lord says to Ladoni, my Lord, unto le, the preposition Adoni. This is what we see over here on this side of the screen. Ladoni is the uh, translation of my Lord or the Lord of me. Um, and so, is this Lord a divine Lord or is this Lord a human Lord? Well, that's what Biblical Unitarian wants to preach to us and, and teach us, that this Adoni is always rendered in the Hebrew Bible as the human uh, agent. Some could be an exalted type of human, could be an, a very important human, but it's not a divine human. So, Neum Ladoni, shave Limini, right? Sit uh, sit at my right hand, Limini, Ad Ashit Oivecha Adom Le Raglala, Raglacha, tongue twister there at the very end. So, this is the passage in question, and again, the the clause that's really going to getting the most mileage in our discussions are the words that I've got highlighted. Those three words: Neum, Yahweh, Ladoni. The Lord said to my Lord. When we look at the same passage in the Greek Septuagint, we have on your screen right now um, another rendering of an English translation that's resemblance 
of a kind of a modified KJV. Yahweh said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Notice in this rendering, the word Lord here is represented by a capital L, but lowercase O-R-D. In Biblical Unitarian's own revised English version, they make the Lord here as a lowercase Lord. I'll show that to you in a, maybe in a screen grab. And then we have the uh, the Hebrew once again uh, for the uh, the clause in question. Neum Yahweh Ladoni, the Lord said to my Lord. And then we go down to the bottom there, two representations of the Greek, uh, the Alexandrinus on the left side of your screen, and the Vaticanus on the right side of the screen. And for the most part, they are identical with some slight differences. You know, Todav to David Salmas is how the uh, Alexandrinus opens up. But Salmas to David is how the Vaticanus opens up. But after that, they both read basically the same, right? Apen ha kurios to kurio mu. Um, the Lord said to my Lord. Let me blow that up on the screen so you can see. So using the, Alexand uh, the Alexandrinus here, the one that was on the left, the clause in question here, Apen ha kurios to kurio mu, said the Lord, or Yahweh, the Lord of me, or to the Lord of me. And so in Greek, we have the first kudios here being a representation of Yahweh from the Hebrew, Y-H-V-H, Tetragrammaton name. So kudios here is the capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, right? That's God, the Father. And then the second Kurio Mu, or the Lord of me, or we smooth it out by saying my Lord. The second Lord of me is the human Jesus that Biblical Unitarian says, well, here's proof, because even in the Greek, the words are different. It doesn't say, Apen ha kurios to kurios, as if it was God speaking to God or something to that effect. They would imagine that if it was Apen ha kurios to kurios, then it would be something to the effect of the Lord said to the Lord, or God said to God. Thus, God was speaking to himself or speaking to another person of himself, just like Trinitarians say. But instead, it says, Apen ha kurios to kurio mu. And so, to kurio mu, in their opinion, is proof positive that it's a, another Lord, but in a lesser sense, in the, in, the, in the category of a human lord, kurio mu. It's still the same root word, as you can probably hear it. Kurio and kurios share the same root words, but because it's rendered as to kurio mu, the lord of me, then according to Biblical Unitarian's understanding, this is proof. All right, so that's kind of what we're dealing with in the, uh, the verse in question. So having said that, let's look now at um a couple of different resources the first one i want to use is psalm 110's uh, explanation by wikipedia yeah a non-theological explanation i present this first because they're going to try to at least present this verse fairly in in a non non partisan i believe i'm using that word correctly in a way where they're saying we don't have a christian next to grind we don't have a Biblical Unitarian X to grind. We don't have a Trinitarian X to grind. We're not trying to present a Trinitarian versus non-Trinitarian. We just want to present the material fairly and show you how both sides are representative in this discussion. So I thought I'd pick on them first. Psalm 110. This article is about Psalm 110 in Hebrew. Masoretic numbering for Psalm 110 in Greek. Septuagint or Latin Voltaic numbering. See this link. Psalm 110, 111. We might look at that in time. But for now, Psalm 110. The Lord said unto my Lord. All right, this is... Um, Wikipedia, and so let's see what they have to say about this particular matter. Psalm 110 is the 110th Psalm of the Book of Psalms, beginning in English in the King James Version. Quote, the Lord said unto my Lord. Notice the, the capital L-O-R-D in contrast to the capital L lowercase O-R-D. In Latin, it is known as Dixit Dominus, the Lord said. According to Wikipedia, it's considered both a royal psalm and a messianic psalm according to um cs rod associates it with the king's coronation and all of these uh, references inside of wikipedia they've got footnoting that you can go back and look at on your own uh, they continue in the slightly differing numbering system used in the greek septuagint and latin vulgate translations of the bible this psalm is 
uh, Psalm 109. So it's 109 in the Vulgate, it's 110 in your Christian versions, and then in the, in the Hebrew and in the um, uh, Septuagint, it's Psalm 111. Okay, let's keep reading Wikipedia. They go on to say that this psalm is a cornerstone in Christian theology. And I mentioned this earlier, uh, is that um, this psalm is used more than any other psalm in the New Testament. Second, here we go. Uh, Wikipedia continues, as it is cited as proof of the plurality of the Godhead and Jesus' supremacy as king, priest, and Messiah. So right away, Wikipedia is bringing this information before us that Christianity regards this psalm as a verse that, due to its um, ubiquitous use in the Apostolic Scriptures, right, it's used quite often. Among other things, it's utilized to present not just the human side of our Messiah King, the human side of Jesus, but ultimately the supremacy as king, priest, and Messiah within the plurality of Godhead. Father, God, Son, God, Holy Spirit, God, or God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Not three gods, one God, three persons. That's what we mean by plurality of Godhead. So, Wikipedia continues by saying, for this reason, Psalm 110 is, quote, the most frequently quoted or referenced psalm in the New Testament, end quote. And so, that seems to make good sense, that the writers of the Apostolic Scriptures, right, this is part of our first hint into, as I'm trying not to tip my hand too early, part of our first clue into how did the Apostolic writers, the New Testament writers, view this psalm? Were they biblical Unitarians, like the uh, that denomination wants us to believe? Or instead, were they what I say as experiential Trinitarians? They experienced the incarnation and God walking among men as the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ, like John teaches in his first chapter, John 1. They experienced the incarnation and God among men, right? Emmanuel, God with us. They experienced Jesus and thus the writers of the Apostolic Scriptures, right? The apostles, predominantly um, Paul and those other writers, they came to understand by not just their own experience and under and uh, 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 dialogue with Yeshua, but also because of the the Holy Spirit confirming this and and empowering them with eyes opened to understand that Jesus is very God and yet He's fully human. He's truly God and truly man. When we say He's a hundred percent God and hundred percent man. Some people object, right? The, the mathematicians write into me and they say, foul, 100% plus 100% is, the math is wrong. You know, 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 3, not 1. So, I understand the paradox there, the, the challenge of presenting this type of mystery, this Mysterian theology. But the only point I'm trying to highlight before we continue with Wikipedia is that the New Testament writers had already come to the understanding that when they read through their Tanakh, now with eyes open to the reality of the mystery being revealed, the mystery that was previously hidden to human beings, to humankind, but now revealed to man through the power of the Spirit, and one of that, one aspect of that mystery was the mystery of the Incarnation, the mystery of the plurality of, of the Godhead, the mystery that God is uh, human in the person of Jesus, but yet He's still transcendent as God the Father. So, when they quoted the uh, passages out of the Old Testament and brought them into their New Testament writings as in support of their understanding of Trinitarian theology, it was inspired by the Holy Spirit. It's the point I'm trying to make, make aware to you. So this is the point I think that biblical Unitarians sorely gets wrong. They simply do not give the New Testament writers the credit of having eyes opened to the mystery. Apparently, Biblical Unitarians' eyes are still closed to that mystery, or they believe that the mystery is still hidden, even if they acknowledge mystery, which I'm not sure if they do or not. I'll have to have to dialogue with, with a, a Biblical Unitarian to find out. But the point I'm bringing up as an, as an Orthodox Biblical Trinitarian author myself, a, Bible, a, a believer, is that mystery existed in the Old Testament, so it makes sense why they didn't fully understand God's nature, but has been revealed to humans that Jesus is very God in flesh. In Psalm 110.1, where the Lord says to my Lord, is offered up in the New Testament as one of those proof texts to show that the Lord, 
by that time had already been understand in the New Testament uh, era as God and yet mysteriously more than God.